contenders. And I think our first contender we will talk about is a part of that Big Ten East, the Penn State Nittany Lions. This is a team that took a step forward last year. A lot of people maybe thought it was going to be a bigger step forward, but they did run into their Michigan and Ohio State problem once again. 55% returning production on the offensive side and 75% returning production on the defensive side. This team has a win total of nine and a half and is currently picked in most spots as the third best team in the East, but within the top 10 in the college football rankings. What do we see with Penn State? Are we high on this team? Are we lower on this team? They also have to change quarterbacks. I think this is my team. I'm going to be, if I had to, if I had to get on the back of a, a Big Ten team, I think this is my team. It's kind of insane that we didn't put them in the, in the, what is it, the favorites? The list. favorites. The favorites. I'm sorry. The favorites. Can you have list. three favorites in one division, though. I, then the Pac 12. Otherwise, it doesn't work that way. Well, you know, and it, it, it's fair. It's fair to put them in the contenders because, I mean, of the record. I mean, it's like four and 14 versus uh, Ohio State and Michigan under Franklin. It's just, it hasn't been great. Can they take that next step this year? And honestly, is the next step just winning one of them? Like, yeah. I think it is. If you can just beat maybe Michigan at home, I think that's taking the next step. Everybody's going to be talking about Drew Aller or Ayler. Somebody said Ayler. Aller. On I, I, I said, I've seen Aller. Like, it's Aller. I've seen Aller. That's what I said. Anyways, but I, he's raved by the staff. You know, there was some controversy last year that I think a lot of people wanted him to step in. They were kind of over the six year. Clifford, which I think is ridiculous. 16th but, year. They <laughs> act like he played so poorly. The guy was above serviceable, like above average quarterback. Very above. Go on, though. No, you're, you're fine. I, it, I think they got a lot of weapons at, at on this offense. I talked about the transfers they brought in at the receiver position. Keandre Lambert-Smith is an all-conference potential guy as well. I think he might be a second-team all-conference receiver in a, against those Ohio State guys. Theo Johnson. Um, will be another guy at the tight end position that's going to be a legitimate threat. Everybody already knows about the running backs and what they bring to the table, and then they bring in probably the best offensive tackle in the country uh, back. But can Fashenu stay healthy? That's the biggest thing. He he had some injury problems last year. I think it's kind of a group um, at the offensive line that they need to see a little more this year. And they have the talent. Can they stay healthy? And can they make, take that next step to protect Aller? Um, and then on the defensive side of the ball, I think they got the best linebacking group in the country, or probably the Big Ten. I wouldn't say the country. Country's a bold word, uh, bold statement, but I think this is a team I'm I'm really high on. They have one of the best defensive coordinators in the country, Manny Diaz. Mm -hmm. um, I, I can't say enough about this team. 100%. I think we're starting to get a little bit of a theme going on here, Parks, and if you're you know picking up what he's been putting down and what I'm thinking. So that's mm -hmm. why I want to go to Reese right now is like, Reese, where are you at on this Penn State team? Because – you did put under on a Michigan team who has higher expectations. And now you have a team like this that's not necessarily a dark horse, but they're kind of sitting in the shadow a little bit. I think they're going to be very good this year. Uh, take their over on wins, whatever it is. I think they're going to be a team that's going to beat one of those two top teams in the East. They're going to have no problem doing it. They're taking the steps in the right direction. Like you guys mentioned, or Shaver just mentioned, do they just got to win the one? And that's kind of what they can do for it and get themselves more established in, in, the, uh, in the conference. But the big thing, too, in their, their defense that hasn't been mentioned yet, they have arguably one of the best one-two punches with the corners uh, with mm -hmm. uh, Kaitlin King and then Johnny Dixon. Those guys are not easy to throw against. Uh, but Kaitlin King led Big Ten last year and passed the defendant with 21 against. And obviously, we mentioned it weeks before, going into the season without your quarterback, that's the hardest thing to figure out if you don't know what to expect. But I think he's a guy that, He's he's won it for a reason last year. I mean, people want to hate on Clifford because it's it's just easy to hate, hate on a guy that you've seen forever. You know what he's going to do, and one hundred percent because do something different. But I think he's just, he's your um, I can't think of the word like not firecracker. He's uh, just your question mark for the season or whatever, yeah. whatever you want it to be. If he whatever he's going to do for you uh, is going to is going to define your season. But again, Happy Valley is one of the hardest places to play too. I think they can easily easily um, get somebody at home that they're uh, and they're not supposed to be. So, but. Yeah, and like you look at you know Drew Aller, like that's why everybody wanted him. It was the, you know, the appearance of a high ceiling and a higher ceiling than what Clifford had. But with Clifford, you have to remember last year was a sixty four percent completion percentage, eight yards per attempt, and ranked number three in the Big Ten in quarterback rating. I mean, pretty good. behind, like, come on, like we got to understand good. that. Right? Yeah, and so I think it's just you know what's behind door number two with a guy who's very highly touted out of high school and has a very high ceiling. He's not going to 
this is kind of like the Ohio State thing. He's going to have a good stable of running backs in Nick Singleton and Allen. Both ran for over 700 yards last year. Nick Singleton is a true freshman, over 1,000. And Theo Johnson at tight end, is, I think, is like we have to talk about him because that is a one of the best bailout options in the country, one of the best tight ends within the Big Ten as well. Um, he's going to be a consistent playmaker and a consistent bailout option for a young quarterback. Defensively, this team is nasty. I think this is going to be the best the best defense in the big 10, which is a lot to say, because there's a ton of teams in this conference that, you know, could hold that ranking. The defensive line has added is going to be the strength. And it should be a year where James Franklin, I think can rely on his coordinators and really just understand that the, the team's there. And I think he's confident that he's gotten that team to a position where they can win football games. Now where in years past, it was like, well, they have a, multitude of question marks on the defensive side or can they get better quarterback play can they get better offensive line play well i think they've hit a spot after um, a good recruiting stretch the last couple of years that it's time to blossom a little bit in happy valley parks talk about the mini lions anything you want to add yeah i just think looking at the grand scheme of things it's a team that brings back 16 returning starters including nick singleton who's easily in the top of the running back room in the big 10 um, probably put him right up next to Blake Corn. I think you're going to get an easy 1,000 yard year out of him, if not more. I think uh, he could be a guy that puts up absolute numbers because their line's good. This is the Franklin's best chance to to win this Big Ten East that he's had in a while. I think if you look back, and not a lot of people are going to like this because I'm very high on them as well. But if you look back back statistically, 2019, Penn State goes 11 and two, and then they come back with a four and five season, which is COVID, and then they go to seven and six, and then they're 11 and two this year. So they're due statistically for a little hiccup. I, I don't think mm-hmm. it can happen, not with this much returning production. Um, I, I'm a, a very big believer in Drew Aller and his, and his product, um, but it, it, this is going to complete the Big Ten East, man. This is the make or break, I think. Uh, I don't know if Penn State's fans believe in or their program believes in us, them as much as we do, right? Because they're, they're, they do, they play Iowa, the whiteout game. Mm-hmm. Why is that whiteout game not Ohio, mm-hmm. and, uh, Indy, somewhere else? Why is it not Michigan? When you play Michigan at home, why is that? That is not? because it's too late in the year. The TV networks. Yeah, it's the TV networks. Okay, because it's late in the year and you don't want it to be freezing. That's fine. But like, I hope this team is believed in in Happy Valley as much as they are believed in in the Midwest because this is Franklin's best chance to win this East by a lot. Yeah, quick touch on the schedule prior to jumping into that over under that sits at nine and a half. West Virginia, Delaware, your start. West Virginia, not going to be a great football team. We had already covered them in our Big 12 preview. At Illinois, when we'll get to Illinois. That's a I tough Big Ten opener. Better. Yeah. yeah. Iowa, and then they go to Northwestern. So your West draws are Illinois, Iowa, Northwestern. You get them all in a row. And then you go to Ohio State. You get Michigan at home, and you end the year with Michigan State. Again, like, is this – that could, that at Michigan State is where I kind of worry, depending on what's going on throughout the in rest Ford of the year, Field. right? What? Yeah, at Ford Field. Yeah, that Michigan God, State fans are going to be there. Yeah, um, that's dumb. Quick, that's quick not as scary. What did Reese need? Reese had a point. No, I, I was going to mention the schedule too. I was just saying like if Aller isn't the guy and he's not ready by week three, week four, those are two very sneaky um, games that they could very play interesting well. games. Win total over under at nine and a half. Where do we see Penn State starting with Reese over? over. Is this a unanimous over? This is. This is the easiest over win total. I agree. I think nine and a half is there for your two Ohio State and Michigans. But then there's one more maybe they think they lose, but I think 10 is very seeable. Look at this. I mean, outside of the Michigan and Ohio State game last year, uh, looking back at the schedule, uh, they didn't come within 20 points of any other Big Ten opponent. They ran the the Big Ten outside of those two games. and, And I say they maybe get one this year. So... I mean, nine and a half. I, I don't see this team losing more than two games. This is what I'm yeah. talking about. This, this is the trifecta. If they beat Michigan at home, you have the three-way tie. Because yeah, Ohio sure. State gets beat by Michigan, Michigan gets beat by Penn State, and Michigan beats Ohio State. That's a three-way I, tie. I, They're I, all 11-1. and one. I think the, the first four games is honestly like the biggest tester of anything. I mean, you have... I mean, West Virginia, we talked about, is not very good, but that's Come a on. tough That's a tough first Power 5 opponent to play. Ain't no um, blue hand coming into Happy Valley and winning. That's all. It sure shit ain't UMass. All month. You have <laughs> at Illinois, you have Iowa at home. So you can come out of that with no sweat. Maybe they win. If they win at all those games by two touchdowns plus, 
yeah, you're looking at it. This team is going to be legit. Yeah. This team just decided to schedule um, non-conference opponents based on the unique mascot with your Mountaineer, your Blue Hen, and your Minutemen in there. <laughs> So uh, that's uh, where we we can't. I gotta stop. I gotta stop you guys. We we what are we gonna do? All I have all these teams eleven and one beating each other. And do you know what the tiebreaker is? I had to look this up for an hour last night. It's what you who got? they beat. It's like the the rest of the conference schedule who they beat, right? So if I had them all eleven and one, they're all undefeated besides the tiebreaker. I have no idea who the fuck is going to get in. It's, it's gonna be, be like interesting, and it puts the Big Ten in an interesting spot it? with a fourteen playoff. It, it, that's, somebody above me. That's right. I would assume that they're going to go base that off strength of schedule. That would be the other tiebreaker I couldn't find. Like if they play yeah. more ranked teams than one another. But 11 and 1, three 11 and 1 teams in one division in college football is very, very possible for these three teams. If, if, you're, doing, if you're doing strength of schedule, Ohio State would easily win that because you have Notre Dame and Western Kentucky as your non con. You have at, at Michigan, uh, at Wisconsin. I think they're, they would easily win that. Also. I know, but can you make an argument? With and uh, no, you can't. I was just thinking for Penn State. I was like, yeah, you can't make an can. argument with Virginia. No, nah, you can't. <laughs> you can't. Maybe not this year, Neil. Maybe in another life. Another contender.